Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ann Holofer YouTube channel. This week the member lamp is green, chosen by our family member Nordic Ants. Thank you. And today we are taking a look at all of my ant colonies. Today I have 13 different species. We also have some over here and some over here. And I actually am waiting for two more ant colonies, so we'll have a total of 15 in total. I'm currently waiting for a Hapagnathos Venators colony and a Campanotus Singularis. So, 15 colonies in total? And today we're gonna chat about all of them. So where else to start than my possibly brain-dead Campanotus Herculinus? If you don't know that story, this colony got cooked and then all died, except they all woke up again. It's a longer story and if you'd like to hear the full story, check out episode 6 where I'm talking about, well, everything that happened. It has a quite click baby thumbnail with a death face and stuff like that. But saying that, how are they doing today? Well, the colony is currently housed in a Wakushi Gen 3 nest, more specifically the medium cork and gypsum nest. And they currently have a DIY outworld. The colony has 13 workers at the time of recording, which is quite a drop since the last video. But looking around the nest, it's quite clear that the colony is on the verge of an explosion. There are so many big larvae and so many eggs, it's just brilliant. To be honest, I was really scared that they were brain dead, as zero new workers have hatched since summer of last year. But as some clever people had predicted, they had for some reason entered hibernation around August. Really weird, because they just did not forage at all, they did not go out, they didn't drink, they didn't do anything, they didn't accept protein, they didn't grow, completely stopped. The only time I saw them in the outworld was never, they weren't never in the outworld. I think they got the uh, water from me watering the gypsum and then they licking on the gypsum, I'm not sure. But after hibernation, the colony seemed to have well kickstarted and now I'm often seeing workers out in the outworld. They are feasting on the protein and sugar and well, there are tons of eggs. So all in all, I'd say they seem to be doing quite well and hopefully we will see an explosion throughout this year. The next colony on the list is the Campanotus Ligneperda experiment. They are still housed in a specialized Wakushi Venus nest. After leaving hibernation, one of the three queens sadly died. It wasn't too surprising as before hibernation she was the least fed worker. And as far as I saw, every time the worker came to feed her she showed a little bit of aggression but accepted it. So maybe she just didn't get the proper, well, hibernation preparation. And whereas the two other queens they got full to the brim, well the last queen just did not make it. But looking around the colony we still only have three workers, but a nice brood pile together with three pupae at the time of recording at least. The two remaining queens are both still being fed and have workers split between them, although the brood is still located with queen B. But all in all, I think although we have lost a queen, I still think this experiment is going interestingly well as the workers are just going back and forth between the tubes like they are one colony. Next on the list is the Campanotus nigrorensis colony and as many expected, they have had an explosion in numbers. Due to this, the colony have now been moved into an extra large Gen 3 cork gypsum nest from Wakushi. Together with this, they also have a Wakushi S4 outworld. And this is actually the first time I'm trying the pillar accessories for the Wakushi pillars and I'm not gonna lie, they work so well. Now I will show a full video once I cover them of how the moving went. Spoiler alert, it took around one hour and I didn't even push them. Damn, that's insane. The colony itself is doing really well with tons of brood in all stages. I've now started to feed them two roaches every week and maybe I should even do a midweek feeding as well because well, I think they can handle it now. Next on the list is the Formica Fusca. The Formica Fusca colony currently lives in a Wakushi Gen 3 nest, more specifically the medium acrylic and gypsum nest. And they also have an S2 outworld connected once more from Wakushi. Just like with the Campanotus Herculinus, they were doing really bad last year. They apparently had also just entered hibernation really early. Although Fuscas have the good reason for them not carrying brood over winter. So I guess that is more of a reason than the Campanotus Herculinus. But after taking the queens out of the hibernation, they have laid an incredible number of eggs. 
it's hard to say if they are doing well because, well, they have a ton of X, but they are from Kafuska, so just by me sitting here, they're going crazy. So it'll be interesting to see if all of the thousand eggs, I mean hundreds eggs, there are a lot of eggs, will all hatch into larvae and enclose as adult workers, or if they will eat them. Yeah, it's hard to say because it's Fuscas, but they seem to be doing really well. And I'm not gonna lie, saying that they're doing really well, I was really scared that they weren't gonna do well because of last year, and I was gonna scared that it was just, just gonna be the end of it. But maybe we have a chance here in 2022. Next on the list is the Lacius Niger Colony. This Lacius Niger Colony is currently living in the small aesthetic ants nest. They are doing really well and to be honest there's not really much to say. At the moment they are always insanely thirsty, always having around 20 to 30 workers drinking outside in the outworld. But inside the nest there is lots of brood and I think before summer I will have to relocate them in a bigger nest because, well, they seem to be on the verge of an explosion as well. A lot of larvae from last year are now pupating. The queen have laid a new big batch of eggs, so it's all in all just going really well. Next on the list is the Lacius Flavus colony. The Lacius Flavus colony is currently living in the Wakushi small gypsum nest and with a S1 outworld connected. Inside the nest we still have four queens, although two of them are still handicapped. I don't really know if the two handicapped queens are producing eggs or simply just staying alive. It's very weird and I still don't know why the colony did this. But it'll be really interesting to see rather they survive the year or, well, if they're killed off. One thing I can already see now is the two queens that are the main queens have a good fat gaster, meaning they have been fed, and the two handicapped queens are not being fed as much. So it's just really weird that they're keeping them alive and I would really like to know if they are actually producing eggs or just laying there, living their handicapped life. And I'm curious, what do you think? Are they laying eggs or simply staying alive? But all in all, it's really hard to say how they're doing. I mean, they have a lot of eggs and they have a lot of brood and that is, I guess, what matters the most. The Lacius Fuliginosus. The Lacius Fuliginosus colony is currently in a Wakushi Venus nest. They still have their host Lacius Niger workers and some brood. So far, we still don't have any workers from the queen and looking at the footage from last year compared to this year, it seems like they have lost a few eggs and it can really go both way with this colony. And saying that, it'll just be really interesting to see rather they get the first workers. If they do get the first workers, well, there's a good chance that they will survive. If they don't, well, that may be it for this Lacius Philigonosus queen. Only time will tell. The Myrmica Ruba colony. The Myrmica Ruba colony is currently living in a Wakushi Gen 3 medium full gypsum nest with a small high-tech ants outworld connected. Now since I've moved my ants into this new ant room as this table isn't all flat because well it's DIY table, it isn't the best, and the magnetic click connectors have sometimes clicked off leading to a big escapees and I think, I think I've got all of the workers in again but we have had some big escapees a few times so maybe I should just tape the entrance connector. Now last time I showed them in a dedicated video they were living in the medium acrylicness from high tech ants. The problem was that I kept watering the sponges and they just seemed to dry out within a day or two and then suddenly the workers all moved out with the queen and brood to the outworld to the test tube, moved back in when I hydrated it and all in all this was a big mess. And when I finally moved them into a new nest, all of their larvae were gone, probably dried out meaning that this entire colony had had a complete reset. Today there are only a little bit of larvae and zero eggs as far as I can see, at least after hibernation. So it's all in all really bad because we have a lot of workers dying of old age, while we don't have a new generation of workers coming. So once more, the Myrmikaruba colony is in trouble and I'm just hoping that they can recover. Next on the list is the Ada Mexicana. The Ada Mexicana are doing really well. As you can see, now they have a two-pot system, well you can't see the other part, but they have a two-pot system now. And as you can see, the fungus is exploded. I fed them a leaf the other day and I've never seen so many workers out feasting, it was insane. I made a short about it, so check out my short YouTube. 
link in the description. I can't really lie, they are doing really well and the entire thing of me moving the colony, I'll do a dedicated video. With this colony, they are just doing really well and I'm so excited to see how this colony will explode over the next year. I'm starting to see some small majors, no massive ones just yet, but it will be so interesting to see them grow in this new pod. The pod moving will also be shown in a separate video and that is also why I won't talk much about the Ada Mexicana in this video. And just as with the Ada Mexicana, moving on to the next colony, we have the Acromermix Oxpinosus. And well, they're also living in a two-pot system, also once more from Akushi, and once more they are also looking quite good. As this was the first time I moved the colony within the pots, it went so bad. When I moved the fungi, it ripped apart and I had to do a spoon thing, all kind of bad things. Dedicated video will be shown about this. But the fungus have been ripped to a lot of small pieces today and that's why the fungi looks a really flat compared to the other where it's just a big ball. I don't think that they're doing bad but they definitely cut a lot less than the other and they just seem to love rose petals, they don't really seem to love leaves. But I'm hoping as we have spring around the corner that I can give them some different leaves and they should recover even more. Although they haven't really been bad, I just don't feel like they're doing as well as the other. But then again maybe that is just the other being other and the acro being acro. Next on the list is the Tetramorium Caspitum. The Tetramorium Caspitum colony is currently living in the elevated outworld platform from Poor Morats. That is the, the thing in the background you can see. Now what's real special with this setup is that this is actually a setup where there's no physical barriers except the water below. So this is of course a very small colony with only like 7 workers or something and it will just be nice to see them living in this little setup. I can't really say much about this colony other than they are growing a little bit slowly. It also seems like they've had quite a big die-off being the Nanitics and well that's just set the colony not back but just uh, the colony just looks small and I don't know to be honest they're just quite in the background. I don't really look at them much there's not really much activity but then again this is a small founding colony so hopefully throughout this year we can get some more activity and we can start doing some more fun feeding and we'll make a proper video for you guys to see because right now the most interesting thing about the colony is probably their setup. The Nova Mesa Cagarelli. The Nova Mesa Cagarelli is today living in, surprise surprise, the Wakushi Venus Nest. Yeah, I can't lie, I love the Venus Nest. And I just moved a lot of my colonies out of it. So if I had to do this video a few weeks back, I would have a lot more colonies in them. So just think about that. Today I only have four, I think. The colony currently have nine workers. And since my last video where I talked about my curse, only one worker have died. I don't know what the future will bring for this colony, but it seems like they are doing better than ever. Hopefully I don't jinx it. And I mean, once more we have a lot of brood, but the problem with this colony is that the workers pretty much die the same rate as the brood is developing, but now we have more brood than ever, so maybe, maybe they just push out and push even more workers out. I don't know, it's really interesting to follow this colony and I'm so sad every time I see a dead worker because I'm rooting for this colony. But since I got them, I had to have had 8 workers, then I had 0, and now we are up to 9. So after 1 year and 2 months, I can finally say that we have more workers than when we started. So I guess that is a good thing. All in all, I just hope that they'll keep doing what they're doing at the moment, and hopefully grow to large numbers throughout this year. Finally, we have the Mesa Barbaros colony. Now, oh, this has been one story about them. So this outworld right here, the cracked, or it, 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 it got destroyed, um, it, it killed, uh, we had a mass escape basically. I had so many workers that I lost and I had to clean them up and I tried to put as many back and god damn then we had, yeah you, you see we have tapered, it's a temporary setup, it, yeah, it's, it's not the best. Um, let's just say it like that because well, we have had some escapees and yeah. The colony seems to be doing with a little bit of, ah, uh, not the best. It seems like after the mass escape we had, they just really sailed down and I, I don't know, I don't know how many workers I lost because I kept seeing them throughout the weeks and I of course grabbed them and put them back. But the thing is, inside the nest, they just don't seem as crowded. So now, last year I didn't feed them a lot of protein because I felt like they had a good size, so I just fed them the seeds and kept feeding them seeds and they were happy. Now due to me not really seeing as many workers, I've decided to feed them two roaches a week plus their usual seeds and some sugar. So hopefully they will pick back up and well explode like they have done in the past. Now in the outworld you can see it's quite dirty now, this is because um, we had so many escapes and 
due to me just trying to fix it, I ended up jumping the cotton because I knew that I would have to do a really big um, cleanup one day. And so far, that big cleanup day hasn't come to around yeah. So, I don't know, it just seems like we have a lot of workers dying of old age, which it's normal for a big colony. Um, but due to me maybe feeding them a little bit less, we didn't get as many new workers. So this year I will definitely feed them a lot more, because now I have the room for them to explode even more. And um, I, I, didn't, I don't want to say I didn't before, but I was happy about that size before. Now they can grow larger. Now one final little message, since my last All My Ants update, I can sadly say that the Fidoli Pieli colony have died out. Um, we lost so many workers last time and we were down to only a queen and a few workers. And they had some brood, but it didn't seem that the brood developed. It was quite hard to see because they were so small. And one day the queen had sadly died, so the colony has sadly died out. But saying that, it isn't all sad because of course we have the member land. And let's just get all the members up here. Now a massive thank you to all of the members, but a special thank you to the Hall for Family members. A big thank you to Antscapes, aka Mr. Ryan. A big thank you to Metal Carcase number nine. And a big thank you to Ants Norway. Now once more, we have so many members that I have to check on the list and it's just, uh, I mean, it's amazing. Thank you all for your support. It really means a lot. So yeah, thank you. But a special thank you to, well, I'm just gonna say your names. We have Mr. Co, Antimatters, Ants Kelly, Jazz P, Casper, Poor Morats, Fabi93, Wakushi, Ants Antic, maybe myself. Haho <laughs> Fluffer, and lastly, Stan's Ant. So yeah, thank you to all the members, and thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you have reached the end of the video, would you consider dropping a subscribe if you haven't? I mean, you, you clearly think it's, um, if you clearly think I'm something if you've seen the entire video. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this look around all of my colonies. We have a few in the back, we have all of these in the front. I'm over the moon for how good most of these colonies are doing. We have a few that aren't doing that well, but all in all, I'm so excited to go into this new year of ant keeping. All of these new colonies, well, a Harpagnathus Venators and a Campanotus Singularis, I'm so looking forward to getting those as well, and I'm just so happy, and I hope you are happy as well. Please tell me you're happy. Either way. That has been it for this video. So, don't forget to like and subscribe. Become a member today, if you like. And I will see you all... Zoom a bit away. A bit more. In another video. Bye! Bye!